Shalom. Welcome to Challenging Torah. The challenge this week is to listen and to hear. The Torah portion by Yerva, a word which means, and I appear, is God appearing to Moses and saying, I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, but I did not make myself known to them by my true, existential, eternal self. I am Adonai. Yud hey vav hey. See me. It's one thing for God to appear. It's another thing for God to be seen. And everybody in this Torah portion has difficulty both hearing and seeing. God says, I have now heard the moaning of the Israelites because of the Egyptians. And he commands Moses, say to the Jewish people, I am the Lord thy God. Ani Adonai. And then God makes a promise, a promise we repeat in the four cups of wine at every Seder. I will free you. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. I will take you to be my people. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Moses goes and tells this to the Israelites. But they are crushed, by cruel bondage. Pharaoh has not only refused to let them go at Moses' words, but has said, no, now you're going to make the bricks without even any straw, and I expect the same amount of bricks at the end of every day. Slavery is slavery. Don't even think about leaving. And God says, fine, go and talk to Pharaoh. And at this point, Moses loses it. And he says, the Israelites would not listen to me. How then would Pharaoh heed me? I a man of impeded speech or of uncircumcised lips is what it really says. Moses is a prophet and a role of a prophet is to speak God's word and basically Moses says I don't want to do it I don't want to be a prophet I don't want to talk. It's difficult. God really fights with Moses and says fine I'll send Aaron and as we pointed out last week it's not going to end well because of this. But Moses brings the word to the people, and they refuse to listen. And Pharaoh? Pharaoh is the image of deafness. Remember the Sphinx? Pharaoh is a Sphinx. Nothing comes in, nothing comes out. Why has God hardened Pharaoh's heart? Why do the Israelites refuse to listen? Why is Moses so reluctant? Many, many commentaries. But the essence of the story is, it's going to need to show. It's going to need to show that we'll bring it down to physical evidence. We just aren't at that level, any of us, of being convinced by words. Would that all of our difficulties in life were intellectual. Usually they end up with plague, with sickness, with economic disaster, with something physical that gets us to the place where we say, where is God in this story? How did God really appear? And so Moses goes to Pharaoh, and yes, the 10 plagues happen, seven in this chapter, three in the next. And each one of these plagues is a physicalization of, over here, pay attention, I'm talking to you. At first, the magicians can actually repeat what God does. They can make the waters red. They can bring frogs up. But they can't do lice. They can't do boils. They can't do those things. The boils actually keep the magicians at home, so they're done. And bit by bit, the Jewish people, called the Israelites, get to see God in action. That's why Pharaoh's heart is hardened. It's for the benefit of the Jewish people. I often think, wow, nobody is listening and everyone is talking. Even in today's world, we look at the Israel-Palestinian stalemate. It's all about deafness. We all say, we would make peace, but there's no one listening on the other side. The Palestinians say it, the Israelis say it. Nobody listens to John Kerry, our American envoy of the moment. Who's listening? And God, God just then continues to manifest events in the physical world. We need to know how to leave our own Mitzrayim. 
Mitzrayim, Metzar, the word means narrows. Do we need physical pain to do this? Can we see a story and hear a story? Every year we repeat our story on Passover with the hopes that we don't have to go through the plagues again. As we each face our narrows, our straits, that which keeps us deaf in this coming new year, a global new year, not the Jewish new year, but the universal new year, what can we do to soften the impact of plagues already here, to prevent further plagues, and to reaffirm the fact that human beings are not meant to be slaves, and that we celebrate our freedom when we can open our ears and listen and open our eyes and see whether it's women in the deepest Central Africa, whether it's a plague of climate change, whatever that plague is, how do we open our hearts and our eyes and our ears and listen and see a little bit better in this new year of where is God in this story and how am I to be free? Happy New Year. We will continue in 2014.